Hi, this is Robert White at Tufts University. I'm going to present to you a brief summary of a talk that we gave at the Aerospace Sciences meeting in January 2013. This work is done by Zhengxin Zhao and Minchul Xin, two of my students at Tufts, and was in collaboration with Judy Gallman at Spirit Aerosystems. The uh, talk is about MEMS floating element shear stress sensors, and we'll explain as we go along what those are. The goal of our research is to develop a MEMS sensor, so a micromachine sensor, which can directly measure the skin friction, otherwise called the surface shear stress, for aerospace and automotive applications such as wind tunnel testing. Specifically, our goal is to be able to measure at relatively high levels of shear stress up to around 100 Pascal. This is the approximate maximum skin friction you might see on a flat plate turbulent boundary layer in air at Mach numbers up to about 0.9 at distances a few meters down a flat plate. So uh, as compared to some other shear stress sensors which exist in the literature, our, one of our main goals is to try to increase the maximum level of shear stress that can be measured to make it useful for uh, some of these kinds of testing applications. The particular type of shear stress sensor that we've designed is a capacitive floating element sensor. Uh, these types of sensors have been described in the past, but there are some differences from our sensor for other uh, kinds of sensors you might see that are capacitive floating elements. The way that these sensors work is that they have a center shuttle which can move. Uh, that center shuttle is held up by eight folded beams, so the beams bend as the shuttle shifts over, and the beams are held up uh, at those points in the middle that are called anchors, you can see here. And here, those two locations are fixed to the ground, and these beams along the edges bend when this center shuttle is pushed over by a force. So if a flow comes over this device and creates a force on this sensor in this direction, the shutter will, shuttle will shift over, and these comb fingers at the top will increase their overlap, and the ones at the bottom will decrease their overlap. And we can sense that change in capacitance from the change in overlap of those comb fingers, and that will produce our, our measurement of the force which is applied to this center shuttle. Here's a very quick uh, animation showing how this works. So if we have the sensor set up like this and flow comes in from the bottom in this direction, then the center shuttle will shift over in this direction, the beams will bend, and will increase the overlap at the top, decrease the overlap at the bottom. If we increase the flow, the shuttle will move further and we'll have an increase in that differential capacitance. This differential capacitance is easily modeled using a simple parallel plate model. So if you work through all of the mathematics of this, you can discover that uh, over at least some portion of the range of motion, there's a linear relationship between the change in capacitance, delta C, and the applied shear stress to the sensor. And there's some proportionality, proportionality constant that depends on the thickness and the width of the comb gaps and so forth, other geometric parameters. This is only true uh, if the sensor, if the, the finger overlap is kept within a certain range and the, the fingers don't move out of plane and other kinds of things that could happen. So the goal is to have a sensor which would be linear over a large enough range that it could be used up to this 100 Pascal level. One of the things that we did which is unique about this sensor is to include bumps on the surface of the sensor. So I, I haven't seen any work where this has been done before. The idea here was that by putting bumps on the surface of the sensor, we'd be able to increase the sensitivity of the device. So here's a, a simulation showing that. If we had a bump here, this is a half bump, there's symmetry, so we only need to model half a bump. And flow goes over that bump, there will be a pressure distribution on the sides of the bump and also skin friction on the sides and the top. And so the total force on that bump could be integrated over that to get a total force of about 8 nanonewtons. Uh, it depends on the, exactly the parameters of the flow, but for this particular flow, about 8 nanonewtons of force on that bump. We have 35 bumps on the sensor, and this is actually the force on half a bump. So the total force from all 35 full bumps is about 0.6 micronewtons. If you compare that to the total shear stress on the top of the shuttle of about 0.45 newtons, we end up increasing our sensitivity by about a factor of 2.3 by including these bumps in simulation. Another thing that's different about our sensor when compared to some others that have been described previously is that we uh, array sensors on the, the surface of the chip to create a, a shear stress sensor array. So an individual element looks like this. It's got these 35 uh, black bumps on the surface. It's got the folded beams, the combs, and so forth. The whole element is about half a millimeter by half a millimeter in size. We array these into a group of 4x4 four four elements. All those 16 elements are wired up in parallel, so we end up with one output from this group. So we're measuring the average shear stress over that 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter area. On a single 1 centimeter square chip, we have 4x4 four four array of these groups. So we end up with 16 outputs from each of these uh, groups, and so we're measuring the shear stress in each of these locations on the chip. So we have 
uh, resolution of about two millimeters in space for the measurement of shear stress over a surface, and we're getting these 16 independent elements, uh, 16 independent measurements out. Uh, and another advantage of this uh, topology is that if we had a defect in a single element, so if one of these elements died, uh, maybe in processing or during operation, we would lose perhaps this whole group. We don't lose the whole chip because we only end up eliminating, say, one of the elements, so that gives us some additional robustness. These sensors are fabricated using surface micromachining. They're made out of nickel. We put down chrome gold electrodes on a glass wafer as our starting layer. We then deposit some photoresist and put down a thick 5 micron electroplated copper as a sacrificial layer. We put some additional photoresist down and plate on thick nickel. In this case, our nickel is 8 microns thick to make our structure. Another layer of photoresist and plate on 12 more microns of nickel to make our bumps. And then in our final step, we come in and we etch out the copper from underneath our structure to produce this released nickel structure with bumps on top of it. Here are some microscope images of the sensors. You can see the array on the top left, an individual element on the top right with the bumps on it, and some details on the bottom showing one of the bumps and showing the comb fingers here. One of the critical features is the comb finger gaps. These need to be nice and parallel and there can't be any shorts across these, so this is a critical uh, part of the design. These are tested in a laminar flow cell. The flow cell has a slot in it which is 0.3 millimeters high and 28 millimeters wide. Flow is introduced at one end and flows through this slot and after the flow is fully developed we'll have a linear pressure gradient going down the, the slot and we measure that with these five pressure taps. This produces a measurement of pressure as a function of distance down the channel so we can see the slope of this line which is the pressure gradient. And if we measure that pressure gradient at a series of different flow rates, with the higher flow rate we have a larger pressure gradient. The pressure gradient is directly related to the shear stress if we know the dimensions of the channel and so we can uh, determine what the shear stress is at each of these flow rates to get a plot of shear stress versus flow rate. And so now if we go back and put our sensor in here and run at a certain flow rate, we'll know what shear stress we're introducing and so we'll be able to calibrate the sensor for its output versus shear stress. So here's an example calibration. We use this 87747, which is a digital capacitance to digital out converter, and that's read out by a microcontroller. In this figure on the top right, versus time, we're plotting capacitance as measured by the 87747. So for each of these steps, we're changing the flow rate, and so as the flow rate changes, the shear stress goes up, and as the shear stress goes up, the change in capacitance goes up. And then for each of these different flow rates that we know, we know what the shear stress is from the pressure gradient, so at the end of the day, we can plot the change in capacitance versus the shear stress at each case, and we can produce a uh, plot of uh, shear stress versus capacitance and extract from that the sensitivity of the sensor. We also look at the noise in the measurement, and so in a 1 hertz band, these sensors have a resolution of 44 millipascals. They can measure up to at least 13 pascal, which is the largest shear stress we can produce in our system with negligible nonlinearity, so we know that these sensors are, are linear up to at least 13 pascal. We don't know how far that would extend. We need to build a, shear, uh, a flow cell which can go to higher shear stresses to be able to calibrate these at higher higher uh, flow rates. So thank you for your attention. I've described to you a work in progress, which is a floating element with bump shear stress sensor being developed in our group at Tufts with collaboration from Spirit Air Systems. So far we've been able to demonstrate linearity to at least 13 pascal, and we hope to be able to create devices which will be linear up to 100 pascal. It's possible these already are. We just need to be able to test them at higher flow rates and be able to provide a, a direct skin friction measurement sensor, which will be, we hope, of use to the aerospace and automotive communities for testing. Thank you.